In my last video, we checked out the all new Mongoose P26 dirt jump bike. But now after a few rides, I'm having some serious doubts about this bike. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep it. The bike's name PT26 stands for pump track, which is weird because the bike performed the worst at the pump track. Sure, the bike jumped well, but it is super hard to manual. And that could be because of the very long chain stay and the weight of the bike. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do to shorten the rear end because the back wheel is already slammed in the dropouts. So let's lighten up this bike and see if we can save this build. First up is the stock fork. You can tell right away that this thing is meant to be replaced. The welds are a mess and the fork topped out and bottomed out with every jump. Also, the stanchion got scratched on the very first ride. I'm going to reuse the stock unsealed headset because I'm not even sure if I'm keeping this bike. The Crown Race can be pretty difficult to install without the proper tool. One of those tools is anywhere between $25 and $100, and there's no way I'm paying that. I made a quick trip to the hardware store and bought this galvanized pipe for $9, and it worked perfectly with just a few taps of the mallet. Earlier in the year, I installed a Bellini ZTZ air fork on my wife's bike, and the seals failed and the oil leaked everywhere just after a few rides. Well, ZTZ reached out to me and not only replaced that fork with an updated version, they sent me this new Max Light air fork for free. I didn't receive any commission from them and they didn't tell me what to say in this review. At first glance, it looks like the stickers and branding on the fork must be heavily inspired by Manitou. This fork retails for $120 on Amazon and it seems fitting for this $200 jump bike. The fork has 120 millimeters travel and the stanchions are 32 millimeters wide. I got the 26 inch straight steer tube version. It has a lockout and rebound adjustment. The weight of the fork is 1,730 grams, which is pretty light for a suspension fork and shaves off almost two pounds of weight. I just now realized that ZTZ sent me the wrong fork. This is for 27.5 inch wheels. And I don't think there's really anything I can do at this point because of my tight upload schedule. And I really hope that this doesn't just ruin the geometry on this bike. Man, this is pretty frustrating. I'm trying to take off the cranks in the bottom bracket and the threads look horrible inside the cranks, possibly damaged. On top of that, this square tapered bottom bracket is plastic and my specialty tool doesn't even fit. The tools lines line up, but they're too wide to fit in the plastic. So I'll have to carefully hit the tool into position with my mallet to get the cups out. Now with the bottom bracket out, I can see that there's absolutely zero grease in the thread. And the more I mess with the bottom bracket, all these paint chips keep falling off the frame. There's some pretty big chunks on the floor. For the cranks, ZTZ also sent me this new crank set of theirs. It looks like the branding says SWTXO. It's a two piece 170 millimeter crank set that comes with a chain ring, bottom bracket, and all bolts and spacers needed for installation. These aluminum crank arms are machined nicely and feel lightweight. The entire crank set kit weighs 838 grams, so I'll save about a pound and a half from the stock cranks. The cranks look different from the Amazon picture where the sprocket bolts into the crank. The crank that they sent me has exposed metal here and and has a rough jagged feel and I guess it could be knocked down with some sandpaper and I'm sure it won't affect performance. This mongoose has a 68 millimeter wide bottom bracket shell that is BMX spacing and these cranks are mountain bike cranks made for a 73 millimeter wide bottom bracket. So we'll use the spacers that came with the cranks and install them on both sides of the bottom bracket. Problem solved. <music> 
the stock mechanical brake has got to go. It can barely stop the bike, and for safety purposes, I'm installing a hydraulic brake. Funny enough, I picked up this set of hydraulic brakes as a sample from Alibaba for $60 plus $20 shipping. I haven't seen these brakes around anywhere, and they are branded with the Pro logo. The build quality is impressive and the levers are nicely machined aluminum, and I feel like they're a step up from the popular budget zoom hydraulic brakes. The best part, I think, are the brake pads with a fin for heat dissipation. I'll do a long-term review on an actual mountain bike on these brakes, but for now, this is all I have. But let's talk about the gearing. The stock PT26 felt like it had super hard gearing. The front chain ring is 36 teeth and the rear freewheel is 16 tooth. We can actually use some big brain calculations to put a number to the gearing. I've used gear inches for years. To calculate that, we take the chain ring divided by the freewheel times the inflated tire height. So with 32 16 gearing comes out to 53.5 gear inches. The stock gearing comes out to 60.2. That is a little lower than the 55 gear inch standard, but I raced with the 53.8 for a few seasons and it's a pretty good gearing. With the lower gearing, I'll have to take a link out of the chain. I also had a spare chain tensioner lying around, which really helps with chain alignment and the wheel not slipping in the dropout while pedaling. With the new gearing and link removed, the rear wheel now sits even further back in the dropout meaning the chainstay length is now even longer. After several hurdles and frustration, the build is complete. We have shaved off 3.6 pounds off the bike, which is a few simple upgrades, and the total weight is now 29.6 pounds. Plus the front end should be way lighter, but hopefully the bars aren't too high. In order for me to keep this bike, I wanna be able to double manual and hit some of the deeper manuals at the pump track. Let's head there now. Well, I was just doing a warm up on the PT26 and the back wheel totally just slipped and now the tire's rubbing on the frame. And I think that the bars might even slip back at the exact same moment and I really didn't even case anything, but that is gonna be some major points marked against this PT26. Luckily, got some tools to fix this up real quick and then we're gonna be right back at it. Got it, but I think I can clean it up. <laughs> wow. The bike can actually double manual and I almost got a triple manual. With some real cheap upgrades, I'd say the bike is like 50% better. If you were to purchase these upgrades, it would be $215 and that'd bring the total cost of the bike to $415. The rear end still felt long, but not as drastic. The bars didn't feel too tall with the accidental 27.5 inch forks. I kept the compression set about halfway to keep the forks pretty stiff because you don't want the forks moving too much on a pump track and robbing you of momentum. I completely forgot to set the rebound, but I'd say we got the job done. The 3216 gearing was spot on thanks to our big brain calculations. And the pro rear hydraulic brakes was very nice and I really like the barrel adjuster on the lever. I can't wait to give them a full review down the line. One last thing, I'm getting sick of working on Walmart bikes. Walmart has been pushing the envelope with their bikes as of late, but at the end of the day, they're still just cheap Chinese bikes. It seems the Walmart bikes are built using non-standard parts like this plastic square tapered bottom bracket and weird headset sizes. And there's almost no grease on any of the awful threads. Then when my bars and back wheels slipped, I realized that these Walmart bikes just aren't reliable. I still would like to do a few more upgrades to this bike and take it out to the BMX track for its final test to see if I'm gonna keep it or not. I wanna thank ZTZ for sending me these parts. And if you wanna pick them up for yourself, I'll provide an affiliate link in the description. Also, if you wanna support this channel by buying me a cup of coffee or by sending me some parts for a future build, I'll provide that information in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.